Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Welcome, I'm Doug Grunther with Gerald Salenti, publisher of the Trends Journal and the world's leading trend forecaster. Uh, this is a special program. It's Good Friday today, and a few years ago, Gerald, you did a, a really heartwarming uh, presentation based on your reflections on Good Friday. Uh, what can we expect to see? Well, I always, always say it's not a great Friday, you know, for me. <laughs> and I wrote about it in my Zizzy book, what Zizzy gave Honey Boy, a true story about love, wisdom, and the soul of America. Zizzy, by the name, by the way, Z-I-Z-I, -I, it, that's the Neapolitan dialect for auntie. Zia is aunt. Zitzi is your auntie. And it says something is lost and cannot be found. That's the chapter. And it begins with the squeaky wheels of her walker grew louder as Zizzy approached the kitchen. I was thinking about how the family life I so cherished had been dealt a fatal blow on Good Friday, April 9th, 1971. That year, Good Friday fell on Passover. Now here we are now, what, 48 years later? And Good Friday falls and on Passover. Passover, yeah. Yeah, so that's the day my mom passed away. <laughs> passed away on Passover, and as I said, it wasn't a great Friday. So here's the special that we did a couple of years ago. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti, April 18th, 2014. And here's some of today's trends in the news. Well, actually, I wasn't going to do a trends in the news today. I'm not feeling great. <clears throat> it's Good Friday. That's why I wasn't going to do one, not because I don't feel great, because I don't work on Good Friday. I'm Catholic. I don't follow the church, just to make this really clear. The church to me, the Vatican, like it's a division of Washington, you know? What the church puts into practice is about as far away that Washington puts in practice from Jesus Christ to the Vatican, from the founding fathers to the White House. So I have nothing to do with the organized thing they call the church. But I do respect the teachings of Christ, just as I respect the Founding Fathers for what they did. Of course, Christ is a different trip, you know. <laughs> oh, and the Lent, the torture, going to Catholic school. Every Friday, you couldn't wait to get out, right? No, you had to go for Stations of the Cross. You read from these little books, you know, every, oh, God, and then you couldn't wait to get out. Now it's 4 o'clock. 4.30, you know. Anyway, and Good Friday, special day for me. I always say it wasn't a great Friday. So my book, which Zizzy gave Honey Boy. By the way, I'm drinking some uh, ginger tea and some local honey in it. And thank you all for these recommendations that you have. I have been getting too many calls. And the chapter is, Something is Lost and Cannot Be Found. The squeaky wheels of her walker grew louder as Dizzy approached the kitchen. I was thinking about how the family life I so cherished had been dealt a fatal blow on Good Friday, April 9th, 1971. That year, Good Friday fell on Passover. My two little sisters and my mother always celebrated Passover with our neighbors, Irv and Ann Singer. Oh, and just for a note, I just celebrated Passover, Seda, with Jean-Luc and his beautiful wife, Gisa Botal, over in Rhinebeck with my dear friend, Joe Hurwitz and Claire. And it was a wonderful, wonderful evening. And again, it has nothing to do with religion. It was also Jean-Luc's birthday. And the full moon. At that time, Zizzy worked at a florist 
at S. Klein's department store on Central Avenue in Yonkers. Each year, my mother would go to Klein's and buy a bouquet of flowers to take to, sing to the singers, knowing that Zizzy would make an especially beautiful arrangement. Quote, Flowers are God's smiling faces, Zizzy once said. If I was healthy enough today, I'd still be working with them. Isn't that beautiful? God's smiling faces. One of Zizzy's favorite floral arrangements, which she originated in 1954, was a rosary fashioned by using little rosebuds as the beads and roses to make the cross. The rosary is a big part of Zizzy's life. She says the prayer every night, and when she wakes up in the morning with a rosary still firmly in her hand, she says it again. Quote, if I die in my sleep, they'll find me with a rosary in my hands, Zizzy told me. On this Passover, my mother had called Zizzy to tell her she wasn't feeling well and would be sending one of my sisters to pick up the flowers. But at the last minute, for some reason, she changed her mind. It was around three in the afternoon, Gerald, when I looked up from the counter where I was working and saw your mother and sister walking toward me, Zizzy told me. Quote, I'll never forget your mother was wearing a blue coat and a fur collar. God bless her. She was always dolled up and always looking dignified. She even cooked and cleaned in a dress and low high heels. Quote, Marie, you came, I said. I thought you were going to send one of the children. I was going to send one of the girls, but I had to see you, sis, your mother said to me. But please hurry, Phyllis. That was Zizzy's name, Phyllis. I'm very tired, and please make a bouquet for Bobby. He loves flowers, she said. My brother Bobby had just gotten married, and my mother wanted to give the newlyweds a little something special as well. Quote, the Easter Passover holiday was very busy for me, Zizzy continued, so I didn't have much time to talk to her, other than to tell her how happy and surprised I was to see her. I immediately started to put the arrangements together and remember walking out from behind the counter to get some more flowers when I looked up and saw your mother sitting in a chair against the backdrop of hundreds of Easter lilies. I'll never forget how she looked sitting there with all those flowers behind her. Zizzy paused. Your mother and sister left a few minutes later. I kissed them goodbye. I had told her I'd talk to her tomorrow. Zizzy went back to the counter, and about 15 minutes later, she noticed a lot of commotion outside the store. One of her co-workers went out to see what was going on and told Zizzy that there must have been an accident because there were, an, there were an ambulance and police cars around the scene. Quote, I went about doing my work, not giving it another thought, but when I got home a few hours later, I found out that it wasn't an accident, as you recalled. <laughs> it was your mother. She had a massive heart attack and died right outside the store. Marie had come to see me before she died. I lost my best friend I ever had. I was 24 years old and living in Queens when my mom died. Luckily, I had visited her only two days earlier. My sense of humor was very different then. I was the clown of the family, and that day I had her laughing so hard, she was pleading with me to stop. The youngest child for several years until my two sisters were born call those change of life children in those days. I was the baby of the family and always close to my mother. My brothers and sisters say that I was mom's pet. Maybe I was because she meant the world to me. And when I got the telephone call that she had died, I felt like the world had ended. I remember waking up the next morning hoping that it was a terrible nightmare. Zizzy says, that when you love too much, you hurt too much. I know what she means. My brothers, sisters, fathers, and I sorrowfully ate 
Easter dinner two days later with a banquet that was fit for a king and made by a queen. From soup to nuts, my mother had been cooking and baking all week to make sure that everything had been prepared for the holiday. As my grandmother would say, Cuando la casa preparata, la morta se presenta. When the house is all prepared, death presents itself. It is said that when a mother dies, the family often dies with her. When mom, with mom gone, the big house that had been filled with so much life and so many people for so many years quickly became cold and empty. Dad either lacked the energy or didn't have what it took to keep the spirit alive. My mother proved to be the glue that held us all together. No one could or tried to fill his shoes. The holidays meant a lot. I mentioned how she prepared everything. Ah, I made a lasagna, ravioli. The ham wasn't cooked, but it was a fresh ham. You know, a feast. We used to have feasts all the time. And now look what it's turned into. I say they should extend Black Friday shopping right up to Christmas Day. Kill it all. Hey, remember when Sunday was the day of rest? Ah, screw it. Who needs a day of rest when you can work and then die? You know, people say to me sometimes, who don't know me, you know, uh, you have a short temper if things get ugly. And I say to them, listen, Jack, I'm not on your time clock. Get it in your head. Life comes and goes, man. It's gone. Set. What the hell are people holding on to? They behave like tomorrow is always going to come. And it'll be a lot better than today. One of the things that makes me the saddest in life is how people can't live in the moment and appreciate the joy that they have. And it really spirals into what's going around the world. I'm reading in the Financial Times a couple of days ago about what's going on in Mauritania and how one of these scholars says it's been going on since the education system broke down in Africa 25 years ago. It's not like these kids want to become Islamic fundamentalists. They have nowhere else to go. And that's exactly what I wrote in Trends 2000 in 1996, that they would follow these clerics because they had no other choice, because there was nothing there for them. The world is being destroyed in front of our eyes. Cancer's rampant. I just read yesterday in the New York Times, you're not going to believe this. They found a 19-year-old kid taking a leak in a reservoir in Oregon. They pumped out like 39 million gallons of water because this kid took a leak in it. There's a bear shit in the woods. There's a deer piss in the reservoir. Hey, you could drink that water in, in Charleston, West Virginia, even though it's filled with all those poisons. But these maniacs, these stupid, crazy people that are running governments, make stupid decisions like this. It's one after another. There is no time to waste. That's why I say you better boogie now because tomorrow is iffy. You know, I was looking at my watch this morning. It reminded me. It's my confirmation watch. So when I say that I'm Catholic, I mean, I don't follow this stuff. But, you know, when you're a kid, you're into the, you know, what's going on. It is my godfather. All my aunts, all my uncles, I picked Peter Romanazzi. He was our neighbor in the, in the Bronx. What a sweet man. Oh. He was a postman, and he died at a young age. He was sick in the hospital, and they gave him a blood transfusion, and it had AIDS in it, and he was killed. What a guy. What a sweet man. And look how dignified he looks. And here's a photo in front of my brother's car in 1957. Chevy. They were hot car. And my dad, look at that big bundle he has in his arms. 
That's Italian bread. They went to the Italian bakery to buy that bread. It was Palm Sunday. It was, I don't know what year, probably about 60, because my father had a 57 caddy, Coupe de Ville. Now there are no what are bakers. Now it's a big deal when you have a, a local baker. They used to have the Polish baker, the Italian bakery. I don't think they've had any Irish bakeries. <laughs> oh, they had Jewish bakeries. So here we are. And I wish everybody who practices the faith or believes in it. Bona Pasqua. Happy Easter. And for all of you that have whatever religion you practice, the best to all of you. And may you all live in the ideals that are the foundation of every religion. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So that's it. It's the Easter season. The end of Lent. And boy, I couldn't wait for it to end when I was a kid. Whew. But there's a lot more to it. And it's the symbols as well. It's also a new beginning a birth, a planting, a new direction, a resurrection in the truest sense. So it's spring and it's Easter and I'm going to be spending it with my cousins. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday, whatever religion you are, whether it passed over or it's coming next week. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's Trends in the News. <laughs>